Hiya, so this is the, f uh, the second lesson of the series pack. It's looking at geometric. So arithmetic you added on, geometric you multiply by a ratio. So it'll either get bigger, say you're doubling it, or smaller, say you're half in it. But that's what it does with the ratio. So if you look at these, I'm times in by three. If you look at these, I'm times in by a half there. This one's quite nice because I'm times in by minus two. There you go. So it says here that geometric sequence or geometric prog uh, progression. Uh, so we multiply by a constant amount. That's called the common ratio and it's used as R. A is your first one, R is what you times by. So it's good to make sure you're clear that arithmetic is A and D, whereas geometric is A and R. And it's already filled in, but that's your general term for finding one. So it says, find the tenth term. So n is 10 in this sequence here. I can see that that's times in by 2. So know that a is 3 and r is 2. So I want u10 is 3 times by 2 to the power of 10 minus 1. So if you put that in your calculator as you see it, you get 1, 5, 3, 6. It says the nth term as well. So n is n, a is 3, r is 2. So un is 3 times by 2 to the power of n minus 1. I can't really do anything else with that, can I? I can't really change that. Right, let's have a look now. So now it says finding the sum of the geometric. Now there are actually, once again, there are two equations uh, for the sum, like there was with arithmetic. But with arithmetic, you had the last one, and that's how you could use it. With geometric, you've got to think about what the R value is. Um, so if I use this equation, A, 1 minus R to the N, all over 1 minus R, if you think, if R is bigger than a half, it makes your bottom line negative. So that one, I'd think, I'll use that if R is less than uh, 1, sorry. Where did I get a half from? If R is less than 1, there. Because if R is bigger than 1, it makes it negative. You get a negative on the top, you get a negative on the bottom, possibly. It cancels out. It's no major issue. But if you want to keep it easy, we just multiply through the top and bottom by minus 1. I've got r to the n minus 1 over r minus 1. There. So that would be negative. So if you think for any number less than 1. So this one's fine. So I'd use it. Make sure that's clear. So I'd use this if r is greater than 1. But if you're happy with your negatives, it doesn't really matter. I tend to remember the 1 minus r equation. Right, let's have a go. Um, okay. So he wants the sum of the first 20 terms. So I want to find the sum of 20 terms. So I know that n is 20. I know a is 5. And you can see that I'm just times in by 2. So r is 2. Right, so r is 2. I'm going to use the right-hand equation. So sum of the n terms is a, r to the n minus 1 over r minus 1, just because it keeps it positive on the bottom. So the sum of the first 20 terms is going to be 5. It's going to be 2 to the power of 20 minus 1 over 2 minus 1. There. Okay. That gives me, if you put it straight in your calc, don't like double equals, sum to 20th term is 5, 2, uh, 5, 2, 4, 2, 8, 7, 5. There. Okay. Time I'm doing for time. Right. Let's have a look. Okay. 
So I'll look on the next page. So, so we've got further GP. So we've got three examples on here, so I might not get through them all in the time. I might do example one and then just hang fire and do them on a separate video. Right, so it says, for a geometric sequence with a common positive ratio, the third term is 5 over 2. Right, so I know that u3 is 5 over 2, so that's when n is 3. I know that the seventh term is 5 over 5, 1, 2. So u7 is 5 over 5, 1, 2 when n is 7, right. It's all to do with terms. Um, so underline your term so you know you're using the correct formula, which is un is ar to the n minus 1. So this first bit of information here is telling me that 5 over 2 is equal to ar to the 3 minus 1. So 5 over 2 is AR squared. There. So that's quite a nice piece of information to have. For the second piece of information, it's telling me that 5 over 5, 1, 2 is AR to the 7 minus 1. So 5 over 5, 1, 2 is AR to the power 6. There. Right, now then, I need to find either A or R. What I can do is divide. I can divide this equation into that one. But another sneaky way of doing it is to rewrite this. Because that's AR squared, if I write the 5 over 5, 1, 2 as a r squared, now I've got left, times by r to the power 4. It's going to do exactly the same as just dividing. So my a r squared is 5 over 2. So 5 over 5, 1, 2 becomes 5 over 2 times by r to the 4. The pack divides, it just does. 5 over 5, 1, 2 divided by 5 over 2 is equal to a r to the 6 divided by a r squared. Which on when you do like when you do the next step, it gives you exactly the same, because I'm going to times by two and divide by five, and the fives will go. So I've got two over five one two, or one over two sixteen, is equal to r to the power four. Now then, if you do the fourth root of that, you'll get. A quarter. Remember, because that's an even number, it'd be plus or minus there. Right, now it says it wants the positive one. Now you must show that there is a positive and a negative. So it's a positive only. So R is plus a quarter. So you've done your work, is it okay? So I want the sum of the first seven terms now. Right then. Oh, I've not found the first term yet, have I? Um, so I've got the common ratio, but I've not got the first term. So if I use the, the 5 over 2 is AR squared, then 5 over 2 is A times by a quarter squared. So 5 over 2 is 1 over 16 A times by the 16. That divides, it should give us uh, 40 as A. And now I can find the seventh term. So I want the sum of the seventh term. So n is 7, a is 40, r is a quarter. Uh, so I've got a choice of my two equations, but because r is a quarter, it's less than 1, so I'll use the r minus 1. So I've got the sum of the 7 is 40, um, a quarter to the power uh, 7. Is it the 7th term it wanted? Have I misread that? 